Greetings, fellow humans. Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mac Tech Keyboards. And I'm still not used to looking at you straight on. I've been so used to looking this way. And my monitor is still over there. So I'm going to have to move my monitor here and move the camera. Well, I'm doing some rearranging anyway. I planned to do it a little bit sooner, but unfortunately, weather has been crazy and we've been without power numerous days over the last couple of months but it's finally seemed to have calmed down although it was snowing today and it was in the 60s yesterday so hmm i wonder why anyway today we're taking a look at an alice keyboard the ajaz aks 068 and i put it in air quotes because i don't believe this has two b's it's just kind of a 65 percent 68 key split but they're kind of touching at the bottom and it's got an op. Um, I saw it on Amazon. I'm I'm not the biggest fan of Ajaz. I have a, I've have had quite a few. Um, they're quirky in how they do their key mappings. Their software is quirky and I've had just a few just not necessarily completely die on me but just be functional enough to be annoying but not functional enough to actually get work done on. Um, <clears throat> probably about the only ones I like is the AC067, uh, I think it is. It's an aluminum kit. I saw this one. I don't work with Ajaz that, as far as I can see, appears to be owned by Epo Maker now, but I'm not 100% confident in that. Um, but every one of their products is listed on Epo Maker and... Um, I'm not going to go on an Epo Maker rant right now, but I don't and I won't and I don't recommend that anyone purchase anything from the Epo Maker website if you really want an Epo Maker product and get it from Amazon. But anyway, let's get into this keyboard. Um, I saw it uh, on Amazon a couple, uh, been about two weeks, and uh, and it was a $34.99. Now, this one's not the Pro. There is a Pro version uh, that is a three mode. But it does say QMK via on the listing. And I looked everywhere, high and low. I found no QMK source for this whatsoever. So I'm thinking that it's just on, on their site. All you can get is the JSON file. I'll link it down below. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got with this Ajaz Alice keyboard with a knob. Now, one thing I noticed. Sounds like it's just a bunch of keys in there. Um, before we take a look at the keyboard, let's see what we've got in the box. We've got, oh, a nice beige. I don't think I have a beige USB, A to USB-C ca uh, cable. So that's actually pretty cool. We have a manual and I'll get into this because I'm sure, well, I, I shouldn't say I'm sure. I hope it says something about the QMK, but I'm almost positive there is no QMK source for this. Um, I'm really getting tired of companies just saying they, I think some companies are under the impression that VIA and QMK are the same thing. And if you have VIA compatibility, that automatically makes your keyboard QMK. There are many keyboards out there, including most of the Zoya GMK keyboards that are VIA. They're, they're not really VIA. What they are is closed source firmware that is using the VIA protocol to communicate with the VIA front end because VIA is a basically a simple front end for QMK. QMK is the source of the firmware where you can do a lot more functionality. You can create pre-create profiles for say per key RGBs or you know RGB color setups if the, the MCU allows for it or basically if there's enough memory, which most of the the MCUs that are compatible with QMK will have that. Now there are other source form. There's other keyboard firmwares out there, such as Weil, ZMK, uh, KMK, and others. And they're starting to gain a lot of traction, which I'm really excited about because open source means that it's native to me and Linux. So if you're running anything other than Windows, it's going to guarantee you that you'll have the ability to control your keyboard to its fullest without having to run to a Windows laptop or spin up a virtual machine, which I think is a great thing. All right, so uh, we've got one of these 
horseshoe keycap pullers. I'm not really fond of these. I'm not fond of this one at all, and it's very thin. I guarantee this will bend if I use it. I'm not going to use it. We've got the keycap pullers that I just do not suggest using these. Uh, they're just going to scratch your keys. These just get thrown away. All right, so what do we have here? Well, oh, actually, there's two boxes. All right. So I think these are the switches and these are the keycaps, if I'm not mistaken. Why they come like this is beyond me, because, I mean, are they trying to make, you know, save a little bit of money and make the customer put it together? I mean, I get kit keyboards, but this is an Ajaz, an Epo Maker. I'm, uh... All right, so we've got some red switches, and these are branded Ajaz, because Ajaz does have a few switches. They are not lubed. They are nice and hangy. And I mean nice with a sarcasm. And then we have some keycaps in a crushed box. Uh, Alright, I, I really am kind of confused with this whole setup because it's like... I don't know. Just got to... A box of keycaps and a box of switches. And here we are with the AJAZ AKS068. Um, the 65% with a knob. It says it's an Alice layout, but there's only one B, so it's not really an Alice layout. It's just kind of a curved layout a little bit. But of course, leave it up to these companies to just make their own decisions about what things mean. Like I said, I believe they're doing the same thing with QMK and Viam. Now, this knob is quite wobbly. It's not very sturdy at all. I'm not a big fan of that. Let's check out <clears throat> these stabilizers. We do have a PC plate, and it does appear to be some nice thick foam between the plate and the PCB, as well as... A little bit of foam down below the plate but it's so light this thing truly just feels like a toy and on the pic with the pictures i really thought that i was going to be like oh that's a nice keyboard but i'm looking at it and i'm just i don't know i'm not digging it i really it's an ajaz and mamba snake combo aks 068 rgb diy oh okay it's DIY. I, I missed the whole DIY, so it's do it yourself. <laughs> All right, the uh, stabilizers are actually pretty well mounted, um, better than I thought they'd be, and they do appear to be lubricated there on the elbows and lubricated on the inside. Okay, and they're not overtly lubricated. They are decently lubricated. They're not. It's not as neat as I would say, but it's it's all right. We do have a hot swap PCB with south facing LEDs and three and five pin hot swap compatibility, so that's nice. And a few flex cuts on the PC plate. Oh my goodness. This thing feels like I almost feel like I could fold this keyboard. Yeah. Oh. This is uh this is um uh, <laughs> I guess if you're looking for flexi. This is, a, I'm not putting any strength at all into this. That's, um, uh, that's, um, not my idea of a keyboard. A keyboard, I mean, it shouldn't, they don't all have to be battle tanks, but it's got to be at least made to where it can't be flex, especially I don't have much strength in my hands. The fact that I could do that makes me feel really strong. Maybe that's what they're doing. They want Weaklings like us to feel strong because we can bend keyboard. All right, I'll stop. I, I'm in a weird mood today, so please excuse me. We've got these Ajaz stock pingy red switches. Now, granted, we are going on a PC plate, so at least they're not going to reverberate and cause the entire keyboard to act as a speaker, like if we had, say, a steel or even an aluminum plate. Not so much on the aluminum, but we will get that. But with this, I mean, they're just going to be higher pitched, but I'm going to go ahead and load up the switches, then load up the keycaps, and then we'll uh, continue on with this journey with this um, keyboard.
All right, here we are with the keyboard loaded in it. Kind of sounds as I expected it would, very rattly. Sure, it would sound a lot better with some lube switches, but I don't think it would sound that much better. It would require, sorry, cat got on my desk last night, knocked a whole bunch of stuff over and his hairs are everywhere. No matter how many times you clean them, he still has hair. These uh, keycaps, if I had to guess, I would say they're ABS and they're only top double shot. Um, the uh, legends on the darker keys, they're hardly legible. So, but I want to see, let me see, let's zero this out. All right, they're just at one millimeter, so they're just meeting my particular mark for decent keycaps. Um, but PBS or PBS ABS keycaps always, in my opinion, tend to sound a lot a lot clackier, plasticky, especially when they're thinner. They sound much cheaper. I they're thicker. That's that's okay. I mean, there is still a little bit of a higher pitch to them than PBT. In my experience with most of them, though, there are some that will break that mold because it depends on what mold they're using or, you know, the construction or how they do the double shot. Um, so here we have a. Uh, I don't want to be like, you know. Just completely negative. I mean, we did get three extra switches, which I appreciate, but even at thirty four ninety nine, I just. Um, I don't know. I, I don't feel it. It doesn't. Uh, it's not. I mean, look at that. I'm barely, barely. Like, I, I did not. I didn't order a flexible keyboard. And this is. This is. Uh, I mean, I like a flexible plate, but I don't want my entire keyboard being flexy. Let me see. This past QC. January 2024, huh? It just recently came out, huh? So interesting. Well, we do have the volume wheel. You can hear the ping. Even though it's not reverberating, it's it's pinging inside of the switch itself, so it can be heard. Now, I did. I came into this hoping that it would be like, hey, this is going to be a pretty cute 68%. You know, that's kind of like an Alice. It's just a little bit more ergonomic and, you know, split keys. And I'm sure there's no QMK source, which, again, I haven't found. So, mm, well, let's go ahead and plug it in anyway and see what we've got. All right, we do have RGB. The, well, I can see it from this angle from where I'd be typing. It's a little bit better, but from right on top, it's hardly visible. We have caps lock indicator. We have a windows lock indicator, and then we have a Mac mode indicator, which I don't know what it would be. That, that I like. It's nice to be able to look down and say, oh, that's why my... Windows key isn't working, and my alt is acting the Windows key because I'm in Mac mode, and um, and the W obviously for the when you have the window when you use the Windows lock, if your Windows key isn't working, it's because of that. Most of the time on most keyboards, it's going to be function window. To, it just sounds so. Honestly, I, I want to give this keyboard a chance, but I mean, in order for it to sound even halfway decent, I would have to do a lot of mods. And even then, I still think it's going to sound very thin and lifeless because there's just not much to it. I mean, the construction of this thing, um, I'm not really sure I want to take a chance on opening it up. I don't know if it's clipped on here. There's probably screws hiding underneath the feet. 
if I had to guess, because I don't see a seam. Oh no, maybe, maybe not. We got the entire knob out. All right. Oh, it is a standard D knob. It's just on there really tight. I left the plastic behind. Oh, we've got a ribbon cable. All right. So this is certainly an interesting design. There's a ribbon cable. We have uh, flex cuts on the PCB. Um, Obviously, there is no uh, availability for screw and stabilizers, and the plate basically is uh, acting as kind of a light diffuser for those side lights, I believe, because I don't see any LEDs on the sides of the PCB. And that's the tiniest daughter board that I've ever seen for USB, and it's. But, I mean, this is so thin. So the bottom part of the, the case is 1.5, 1.6 millimeters. Top case is 2 millimeters. The bottom case is 1.5 millimeters. And, uh, that's, um, eh. So we do have, wow, there is even a silicone sheet in here. And you think, wow, without this, this would not weigh anything. Because, I mean, this is actually, this is the most substantial piece of anything in here. And obviously, you can see that that's where the uh, USB dongle pocket would go if this was the Pro version. All right. Well, um, yeah. Well, nothing, nothing too interesting in there. At least, at least it's easy to open. And I mean, that is a D knob, so it can be replaced with other D knobs, but. The knob stem is so loose. It's just it's not far from it's not far from falling off. But anyway, let's go ahead and plug this back in. Take a look at the lights. Um, I know I'm gonna have to go ahead and just download the JSON file because I know it's not gonna be oh now it's saying that only the pro is The listing that I got says hot swappable red switches via QMK programmable knob gasket mount when Mac gray. That's not gray. This is beige. But when I look on the site, there's only the JSON file for the pro version. All right. So this one was a little odd. I, in Linux, it just wouldn't pop up. I mean, the key map would pop up and then it just throw a whole bunch of errors in windows. I was able to get it to show up, but any changes I would make as soon as I unplugged and plugged back in, they were all gone. So this is a broken implementation of, of Maya. It is just a cheap, just not worthwhile keyboard. I mean, it sounds awful. I'm sure that even if I were to take the time to mod this thing, it just wouldn't be worth the time. Um, and even what I paid for it, I just don't feel like it's a good value. Like I said, I, I wanted I, I wanted to like it. I did really want to like this keyboard, but I just, there's nothing positive I can say about it. And the fact that they're listening as a QMK keyboard, although it's listed as QMK via on Amazon and Epo Maker, but on Ajaz, which doesn't have any downloads on their website, it's listed as via only, which I mean, that's fair enough, but I don't know. I I can't just cannot recommend this keyboard. I would feel bad if anybody were to buy this keyboard expecting something of actual worth and value. There are much better choices out there than this. But and it's not an Alice keyboard. It only has one B, so it's just a weird formatted keyboard. The keys are cheap and plasticky. Have an unlube switches, but again, even if I put different switches in here and different keycaps, it might sound a little bit better, but I really don't think it's gonna sound that good anyway, because we're dealing with such thin 
material for the case. So I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test of this Ajaz AKS068. Um, I cannot recommend it. Please don't, don't put yourself through it. It's just not worth it. Um, although, I mean, if you have it and you like it, I mean, kudos to you. But I just, uh, I just, I, I can't recommend this. It's, uh, it's just not good. Anyway, until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.